So the first thing we're going to need to do is build Unreal Engine from source. We're going to need to do this so that we can add a new build target that allows us to build dedicated servers to support multiplayer, which we're going to need if we're going to create a CSGO clone for 5v5. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is head to git-scm.com and make sure that you've got git installed for Windows if you haven't already. Uh, the next thing you're going to need to do is ensure that you basically have a github.com account. All the source code for the Unreal Engine is clonable from github.com. Uh, so once you've done this, we can then move on to the next stage, which is cloning the repository and then building the actual project itself. So the next step is to connect your GitHub account with your Epic Games account. To do this, log into Epic Games. On the left hand side, click Connections, then click Accounts, and then you'll be presented with an option to connect to GitHub. From here, you'll get a modal that basically asks you to agree to one of the following license agreements, publishing or creators. Because this is just a demo video and an example, I'm going to hit the creators licensing agreement and I'm going to really quickly read through all this stuff. Uh, yep, and we agree <laughs> and then link the account. This will prompt me to sign in. I'll use the demo account created. And then I hit authorize Epic Games. I've now linked successfully my Epic Games account with my GitHub account. So now you've linked your account, you'll get an email that basically invites you to the Epic uh, Games organization on GitHub. So if we hit join Epic Games, we can then be a part of the Epic Games organization, which will then give us access to the source code. As you can see here, we've now got Unreal Engine as a private repository that we can now access. Okay, so now it's time to actually clone the repository source code onto our local machine. So we're going to head on into the private repository, hit the code button on the top right and get the clone URL. We're going to be using HTTPS in this example. It's probably recommended you set up SSH keys if you're long term thinking about creating projects in Unreal. But for this example, as I say, we'll head to HTTPS, hit the copy link, and then basically we'll create a folder for us to store the code on our local machine. I've got a folder already set up called Unreal Guide. And in here, I'm going to right click and hit git bash here. So now all we need to do is use the clone command. So git clone, right click, hit paste, and hit enter. And then the cloning process will begin and it will download the code onto your local machine. This can take a while depending on your internet connection. So I'm gonna pause the video and then we'll get back into it once it's all downloaded onto the machine. Okay, so now we've got the source code on our local machine in the folder Unreal Engine. Uh, what I tend to do is then ultimately lock it down to the latest version that has been released. Um, typically, your projects are going to be built. They're going to take a while to be built, right? So ultimately, you want that control over what versions get migrated and when. So the first thing I'll do is rename this folder to UE underscore 4.26.2, which I believe is the latest version at the time of the recording. Uh, and then what I'll do, um, just to be doubly sure, is I'll go to the Unreal Engine private repository Click this drop down here and have a look at what tags are available. And the latest release is 4.26.2 release. And what I'll tend to do is basically take this tag and then in our git uh, bash window, we'll go into the directory and basically I will check out that specific release just to make sure that I'm on that release. Uh, when I build from source. Okay, so we're now ready to build the project in Visual Studio. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do though is install Visual Studio Community Edition. You can head on over to visualstudio.microsoft.com forward slash vs forward slash community to get hold of the installer and get it installed on your machine. Just to add, there is one thing that you'll need to make sure as you go through the installer is that you ensure that you tick game development with C++ as a workload so that it installs the relevant prerequisites in order to be able to build Unreal Engine with Visual Studio. With that said and done and that all installed, we can now move on to actually setting up and building the project within Visual Studio. 
Okay, so now we've got everything installed, it's time to actually set up uh, and create the solution file for Visual Studio uh, that's needed in order for us to build uh, Unreal Engine from source. So if we head back to our folder of UE 4.26.2 and go into it. The first thing we're going to need to run is setup.bat. And this can take a while depending on your machine specs. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to head back and we'll be able to then generate the project files after this is complete. Okay, so the setup files now run. The next job is to generate the solution files for Visual Studio. To do this, just click the generate project files.bat. This will create the solution file that we can open in Visual Studio Community Edition and then start building the Unreal 4 project. As you can see, once that's run, you get a UE4 solution file, which you can double click and open up. Again, a lot of this stuff will be based on your machine spec on depending on how long this may or may not take. Once it's loaded, we go to the right hand side and we basically set up the start project to be the UE4 engine. So right click on this project, hit set a startup project. We also then need to make sure that we're building the correct target. So from the drop down for the solution configuration, we're going to pick development editor from the drop down. For my system, it's Win64. And then going back to the right hand side where Solution Explorer exists, we right click on the project and click build. This will take a while, uh, again, all dependent on what your machine spec is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video and then once this is complete, we can get right back into it uh, just to round off the last few things. Okay, so Unreal is now built successfully. It's time to create our skeleton project. To do this, we'll hit the play button for local Windows debugger. This will start up um, the editor for us. The first time you do this, by the way, it will take a while. It has to compile shared, doesn't do other building tasks. I have done this once before, uh, just for the sake of demo purposes so that it's quick to start up. Um, but ultimately you'll get the editor um, wizard, if you like, um, that comes up. I'm gonna click games, hit next, and then choose first person as our template. Hit next. I'm gonna put it in our Unreal Guide folder and then we're gonna call it Project Versus. I'm gonna be doing this in C++ and I'm gonna leave ray tracing disabled. We're not gonna need any of the starter content and it is for desktop. So with that said, we hit Create Project and this will then create a Visual Studio project file ready for us to get, so to get developing. So once this loads up, on the right hand side, we'll have our setup, um, we'll have our project set up as our startup project. As you can see here, versus, and that's our startup project because it's denoted by that being bold. And then what I'm going to do is right click and then hit build again. And then once this is built, we should then be able to open up the Unreal uh, project file uh, and actually test out to see if our game all works as expected. So now that's built successfully, if we go to the Unreal Guide folder and I open up Project Versus and then I open up the Unreal project itself, this hopefully will then all load up as expected and we should just be able to play the first person template. So yeah, that's how we can get Unreal Engine source code onto our local machine and built, ready to build out um, your projects and games. The next videos are going to be focused around multiplayer gaming, building dedicated servers, and also setting up things like GitHub Actions for continuous integration and continuous deployment. So stay tuned for those.